My name is Helen Daniels, and I live in Port Moody and have um, worked on different careers, that, uh, starting with commercial property management in, in Vancouver. And then I worked as an arts administrator for the local arts council. And then um, my husband and I took over the operation of the Gallery Bistro about five and a half years ago. So all of the things I did up to then helped bring experience to what we're doing now. I, I was organizing arts events and uh, bringing new activities to the, to the area. Uh, one of them was called Pecha Kucha. And um, so then this, by taking on the bistro, it gives us our own venue to do those activities in. And so we're becoming known in the community for the, being a cultural hub, which we're pretty proud of. Well, through, through working with the Arts Council and uh, helping others promote their artwork, I, I thought, well, I should try to show some of, my, you know, some of my own creativity. And so I've gotten involved in photography. It's called Lomography. And they're all uh, film cameras, not digital. And uh, so I took quite a few images. I have several different cameras of that style. And um, so I, after encouraging other people to show their art, I decided I should. So I had a show a few years ago at the Port Moody Art Center. And so that's, unfortunately, with running our business right now, it's kind of busy to uh, find the time to keep doing that. But I, I, I still. I'm looking forward to when I have more time for doing that. But uh, I think I've been interested in the arts for quite a while and it's, um, it's been sort of a uh, transition over time to uh, showing people's art in our venue. And uh, you know, we just keep trying to uh, showcase new artists in the, in the community and once in a while I'll put some pieces of mine in. There are a lot of people that are doing creative things but they don't get recognized. And um, so basically it's a matter of trying to encourage people to express themselves. We have different uh, groups here that come and meet and talk about creativity and projects they're working on. So what's happening in the arts? It's, it's a tough business for, for people trying to make a living in the arts and selling art. But we still need to have, you know, artists need to produce their art. So we'll always have art. And, um, just like to give an opportunity to people to, you know, to show their art so that we can let the community see what's happening here. So a lot of the art in this area, especially at Port Moody, is called the City of the Arts, and people say, well, where is the art? And a lot of it is more in the background or sort of underground, like a lot of people are involved in the arts, but it may not be that visible. When you go through the community, you don't need, you know, you see some public art, but not as much as you might expect, but it's a work in progress. So originally I'm, I'm from Edmonton, I was born and raised in Edmonton and um, moved here about 35 years ago. So I'm uh, close to half of my life almost in Edmonton and half here. Um, I still have some family there, uh, but so the main reason to go back is to for some special occasions of, uh, uh, to do with family or friends. But um, most people really like it out here on the west coast. So if we're, Having a visitor, a lot of them are from Edmonton, they'd rather come here, so it's, it's easy to then show them around uh, about you know, what's, what's beautiful in our area and um, things that they can see here. Uh, one of the things that was quite special in Edmonton was the, the Fringe Festival, which has been going for a long time, and it's, um, I think it was one of the more successful ones. And there you get a chance to see different theater pieces that people have come up with, some good, some bad, but they're all interesting and you know, people put energy into them, so it's good to go out and give them some support. Well, I think with spring comes more light and brings more energy. It it's, means an end to the rainy times here for us, and um, it's more pleasant to be outside walking and uh, going on the various trails. We have a dog, so I, we do our daily walks with our dog, and so we see the changes, and um, it's been a very strange winter this year, cold and snowy and so we're really looking forward to sunshine and seeing things growing again. Oh, okay, I could just find something. Um, basically, uh, you know, uh, Nauru's is, I was surprised to learn actually it's the beginning of the new year and also the first day of spring and I think everybody around the world celebrates spring. So I'll just read a few lines from Rumi. Uh, from a, a poem called Spring. 
Again, the violet bows to the lily. Again, the rose is tearing off her gown. The green ones have come from the other world, tipsy like the breeze, up to some new foolishness. Again, near the top of the mountain, the anemone's sweet features appear. The hyacinth speaks formally to the jasmine. Peace be with you, and peace to you, lad. Come walk with me in this meadow. So, and uh, this, the hyacinth, when I see those, um, I have bought them recently because they're, they smell so wonderful and it's a, a true uh, start of spring when you have those flowers around you. Um. Where did you get that book? I, I need to <laughs> know that story as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah, if you can show it to the camera. If yeah, you want. sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, this book I came across, and I felt that my husband Reiner would really enjoy it, so I bought it for him for a present. And he's uh, very much into spiritual readings and and um, philosophy, so I knew that he would enjoy that. Yeah. Actually, we we know quite a few Iranian people and um, have many Iranian friends that have exhibited art with us and somehow we feel a good connection with them and we've, we've sort of sought each other out and, and met uh, quite a few people that, um, whose work we admire, their, their art, artist, artistic styles and their creativity and um, yeah, they're just people we've come to know and, and enjoy being with. Um. Here in Canada, people celebrate New Year at the beginning of January, mm -hmm. and it's in the middle of the winter. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, my n next question is the, uh, about the, the, the culture of celebra celebration of the New Year in Canada. Mm -hmm. So, uh, if you want to say something about that, what, what would be that? Well, I think typically people think of New Year's as a big time to go out and celebrate, have a big party, and um, just welcome the New Year. Uh, we tend to be a little bit more low-key, and we're, we don't um, go for such a big party, but we also celebrate our an wedding anniversary on New Year's Eve. So it's a special uh, evening for us in, in more than one way, because it uh, celebrates our anniversary of being married. Mm -hmm. If you want to say something about Canada, Mm -hmm. and Canadian life, what would it be? Well, I think that we appreciate you know, the freedom that we have, the, the, the beauty of the country and so on, and I think that people really... Um, uh, the multicultural aspect is it's really wonderful, I think. It's, it gives a very cosmopolitan feel. You hear different languages, no matter where, you know, it could be in a small town, or so you, you, you hear voices and, and you know, the languages from other countries and I think that we have a, a very good uh, system here. People come here and become involved in their communities and make Canada a richer place for having these newcomers. You know, we, we uh, sometimes travel to other places and we don't really realize how, how what a wonderful place we do have to live in and so uh, Travel can be enriching, but it's also wonderful to come back and, and appreciate, again, what we have here. So I mentioned that I do lamography, which is a style of photography, and I have several different cameras of that type, and this is one of them. And you can see that there are four lenses there, and it's uh, plastic, it's only about this big. And uh, when you take a shot, you line it up and then you pull a cord. There's no clicking. And so it's very old school type of camera. So with that camera, I took this image, and that's a self-portrait where I'm holding the camera like this, and then I just made the movement, and that's captured in the four images that you see there. So I also have several other cameras of this style, and they take different types of images. Um, it could be uh, the multiple exposure in camera, or um, one that's got just uh, actually that takes nine images as one at, at one time as well. So they're different. Um, each camera takes a different type of uh, imagery, and also um, they're all basically plastic. And uh, there's been a revival of lamography in the last few years. <laughs>
my name is Reiner Daniels. I'm Helen's husband and partner in this bistro business. Um, I consider myself an artist, even though for the past 30 years um, my main activity has been managing these buildings that we own in this part of town. Um, for the past five years we've been running this bistro. It's um, been a totally unexpected turn in our lives, but uh, it's been interesting. and. Um, now Helen is pretty much taking the reins with this business, but uh, I still come to the concerts and enjoy the environment and I fix anything that needs fixing. And all told, I would say it's quite an enjoyable experience. I consider myself uh, creative and um, I've opened myself to every medium you can imagine. I've worked in everything from um, bronze casting to um, uh, painting, sculpture, wood sculpture, stained glass, mixed media, film. Um, all of those activities are channels for the creative process. And I try to keep myself flexible as far as that goes. I, I want to um, open up to the possibilities of um, creative expression. Uh, is there any a specific piece of work that you want to mention here or tell us about, um, about that? Well, I guess my most recent design activity was uh, redesigning this bistro. We, um, this, this used to be two separate spaces and we combined it into one and uh, even though didn't really know anything about kitchens or restaurants, I put together the design for the kitchen and with some input from Helen and other employees who had more experience, we got it to become what it is now. Um, in terms of my own work, I, I have a painting on the go, I, I do sculptural work. I, sculptural is the latest direction that I seem to be um, moving, so I'm doing wood sculpture. Um, it's, um, you know, one of the kind of paradoxical parts of my approach to the creative process is it's, I almost feel like I need, um, uh, I don't know, a state of grace or whatever to, to make the work that I do. And you can't grab it, it has to be presented to you. So I, I'm kind of waiting for something to suggest itself to me in terms of my next art project. Well, the two pieces I brought um, one is a wood sculpture done from a piece of found wood. I, th I think it's teak. Um, it shows a stylized couple kind of twisted together in a dance-like form. Um, I like the idea of everything is twisted and dancing together. and. Um, Whatever metaphorical depth I managed to put into a work is is uh, uh, I, I regard that as a kind of uh, uh, something almost beyond myself. I, I I open myself to the possibility and then allow it to present it, be, become presented. And in this case, the wood suggested this form, so I took it from there. And the other piece I brought was a, it's a um, self-portrait done with found materials. The idea of that was to express my attitude towards creativity and how creativity is actually everywhere and everybody has it and we just have to 
open ourselves to it and um, allow it to unfold. Are you familiar with uh, no rules in Canada or Persian celebration of the spring season? Uh, have you heard about it? Well, yes, I've heard of it. Yeah, please. And I know that, uh, um, you know, Iran and, and many other countries uh, from that area celebrate uh, the New Year celebration of uh, spring equinox and um, I think it's a wonderful time of year to be doing that. So uh, I've seen that there is a book over there, Rumi. So tell me about that book and uh, where, did you, where did you get that? And uh, yeah. Well, Helen gave me this book after um, I heard a Coleman Barks interview. Coleman Barks is an American Rumi scholar. And uh, I heard an interview with him on the radio and loved the things he was saying and loved his, his interpretation of some of these poems. Um, so I let it be known to Helen that I'd be interested in getting that book. And this is maybe 10 years ago. She, um, she picked it up for me. And I, this, along with a couple of other poetry books I keep by my bedside and occasionally just pick it up and read it. So is there any a specific part you want to read it for us? If well, <laughs> if I'm, not, I'm not a good uh, uh, oral reader. You know, I, I like to read these things and I like to absorb them as a personal experience. I don't know if I'm up for reading Oh. Wait, we have, I have another book of poetry by another um, Iranian author. I, I, he's a Sufi um, poet. I wish I remembered his name right now, but I remember the poem. So I'll tell you that poem. Um, it goes, um, Floating in the world ocean, on a raft of tied together snakes. Grasp and they will bite you. Let go and you will drown. There's something about that sen sensibility. We're, we're in this place and we have to hold on to it lightly. But we're all in the same ocean. I just love that poem. Well, so these are the works that I was referring to. I don't know what more to say about them other than um, I tried to be as loose as possible when making this. This is a found wood sculpture and um, something about the form suggested this twisting entwined figures. And in this case, I, I framed this in a, in a, 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 a door because I think uh, it's always good to leave a little crack in every door because you never know what interesting things you'll find behind it. There's always a kind of hopefulness in the air. It's a fresh start, new growth, uh, you know, coming out of the, the uh, barrenness of winter. Spring is a very hopeful time, and, and uh, I, I, I like the uh, idea that uh, Nehru's is celebrated as a new year because it seems like an appropriate time to celebrate the new year. 
more so even than the new year that we celebrate. Um, the final question, if you want to choose uh, a place, a location in Canada, in Vancouver area, in Port Moody, to go there just to relax, to think about, or enjoy from the nature and the spring, where would be that location? Well, I, I, for many, many years I've walked the trails of um, Burnaby Mountain, and uh, I still I take my dog there occasionally, although she's quite old now. Um, but uh, I must say, I, I really feel the uh, energy of the trees and, and there are creeks there. It's very beautiful. So that would be a place that I would say is uh, at the top of my mind when I think of nature. And if you want to add anything at the end of the interview, well, happy Nowruz to everybody who celebrates this uh, this New Year, and uh, I can only say that uh, I I love the multicultural aspect of Canada and uh, the fact that there are so many cultures here from all over the world, and. Um, to any uh, Persians or other people who uh, celebrate Nehru's, happy Nehru's. Yeah.
Now I can't even think. So it's, uh, <laughs> I know yeah. it is cold in here, but uh, yeah. it's because we're not open today. That's right. Here we are enjoying a day off. Mm -hmm. wow. And another a film experience tonight. It's going to be pretty exciting. That's right. Lots of uh, filmmaking in the day today. Yeah. Well, so we've enjoyed this experience and are happy to let people know a little bit more about ourselves and would like to wish everybody a happy Nuru's. Happy Nuru's. Nuru's Mubarak. From us to you. <laughs> <laughs>